Fusion 360 is very powerful CAD software, but with great power come great responsibilities, and it can seem a little overwhelming in the beginning, and there is some best practices to get a good model. In this basic video, I will take you through those basic steps, and I will model up a part from start to finish. Hi everybody, my name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. This video is the video that I wish I had come across when I started using Fusion 360. Taking a part like this, this is a plastic conduit, might find a few of these around in your house and model it up from start till finish. But not just click click and then be done, we're actually going to slow down a little bit and talk about some of the why we're doing certain things. So if you're a CAD ninja, this video is probably not for you, but if you're brand new to Fusion 360, or if you have a certain areas that kind of like confuses you a little bit, well, then sit tight. Lastly, before we get started, I love your comments and suggestions down in the comment area down there. I know many people read them. I can promise you that I read them all. And if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up. If you don't, well, <laughs> hit the thumbs down. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. So let's get going here. So the first thing you're gonna make sure of is that we are in the model environment inside of Fusion 360. This is like what we call parametric modeling. Second, we also wanna make sure that our units is correct. Now you can change the units in the preferences up here in the dropdown, so they always default to whatever you want, but you can also change it right here on the fly. I think that's another important thing to know. And we're gonna do this in millimeters. Hit okay to that, and now we are in millimeters. So if we're looking at this conduit, we can say that it has four parts. There's kind of the box, there's a lid, and then there is two screws. Now, if you're coming from another CAD system, you might uh, be used to that we would create each component and then merge them together later in assembly file. We actually don't have to do that inside of Fusion 360. We can do it all in one file. It is good practice though, that if you are gonna do that, to kinda like decide to do that up front. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna create a component that's gonna be the box, we're gonna create a component that's gonna be the lids, and then we're actually just gonna bring in uh, the screws from the McMaster catalog that resides right inside of Fusion 360. Now before we start drawing anything, we're gonna go ahead and create those components here in the tree. We're gonna do that by just going up and right click and say new component. Now, as soon as we do that, then we will see we get a component here and the top component actually kind of like shows us an assembly icon. Now, if you are looking for more information about components, I would recommend that you watch the video. There should be a card coming flying out here. Uh, and I've also put it down in the description for the components video I created. So if you really want to dig deep into that, uh, check that out. So the first component here is going to be the box. So we can click on that and we can actually rename that. I'm just gonna call it box. And uh, then I'm gonna go up and create one more component up here by right clicking and say new component. And uh, that one we're gonna call the lid. Slow click, I'm just gonna call that the lid. So what we have now is we have a master uh, top component or assembly. And then we have the two components right here. Now you will see that there's a little eye looking at you uh, next to the name. That depends on what component that is active. So whatever this fish eye is, is activated on, right now the lid, if I go up and I activate it on the box, now the box component will be active. And we're gonna start out with the box here to model this part up. Now what each uh, component here reside, uh, has in it is it has its own origin. And I actually prefer to turn that on. So I have made sure that um, my units are right. I have my first component created here, the box, and I made sure that is active. So when I start drawing now, I'm actually drawing within that component. And I have also turned uh, the origin on, so I can kind of like see that because that's one of the things that is important when we start sketching inside of Fusion is that we tie our sketches down to an origin. It's kind of like nailing uh, things in place in space. 
So to start, uh, in the first entity on this part is kind of like to rough out uh, the outside parameter of the box. So when you start a sketch within Fusion 360, a 2D sketch, you always have to start on either a face or a plane. We will create a 2D sketch that we then will extrude into 3D space. Now that sketch gotta be either on a face or a plane, that's a rule. Now in this case here, we don't have a face because we haven't started a sketch, we don't have anything 3D in the model yet. So we have to start on a plane. So we have three planes we can pick from. I'm gonna select this plane, but it's not really important what plane you select for this. Now you could go up and use uh, the menus up here on top and there's a bunch of drop down menus here, but I really don't like hunting for these. And I don't think that it makes any sense for you as a new user to start uh, in here in the drop down and then later on learning other things. I think you might as well just learn uh, the quickest way <laughs> to start with. So that is to go over here on the plane and right click. And if I right click right here, I can create the first sketch. So I'm gonna click on that. And when I do that automatically, the plane will go normal to where we are sketching. So that's why you saw everything spinning. And you will get this menu over here that shows you uh, our sketching uh, constraints. We're gonna talk about these in a little second. You will also see that we are starting down here in the bottom to capture the history. So this is one of the powers, as you're gonna see as we're modeling up uh, this little box here, is one of the powers is that we have this history. Now, just to go back up to the menu up here, if I hit the drop down, you will see that we have different sketching tools in here to help us. So we have some, some different types of rectangles, we have some different types of circles and so forth. But like I said before, I really don't like to have to hunt in here. There's actually an easier way. Now, if you scroll down to the description area, you will see the list of shortcuts that I'm gonna be using in this video. And uh, you can write them down on a piece of paper or something and put them next to your monitor. Honestly, I don't think it makes sense to learn the software by hunting around in all the drop downs and then later on switching over to the shortcut. There is really just a handful you need to learn. Um, and I will make sure that doing the whole video, they will pop up every time I'm using them. So I'm gonna start by hitting the S key on my keyboard. When I do that, this little sketch toolbox shows up and this will actually change depending on where you, what you're working with in the software, as you will see. Now you will see that there already is some different types of sketch tools available in here, but you can actually also search for some of these. So right now there is a rectangle called a two point rectangle. I actually want a center rectangle. So I'm gonna start searching for that one. So I'm gonna search center and you can see that it's sitting right down here. Now, if I click right here, I will activate the center rectangle, but you can actually also hit the little arrow over to the right and now pin it to that S menu. So when we hit that S key, so I'm gonna do that for this one here. Click that, now you will see that that is now part of this menu. And again, I got this menu by hitting the S uh, on the keyboard here. So it pops up wherever your cursor is, really handy. So I'm gonna go ahead here and hit the center rectangle. And like I said before, it's extremely important that your first sketch are tied down to the origin. It's kind of like that nail in space. So I'm gonna hover over the origin and I'm gonna click once and then you will see that this center rectangle uh, appear. Now you will see that the dimensions are appearing uh, on each side of this box, but it's great. And you will see one of them is light blue. That means I can actually start typing in that dimension right now. So that dimension is gonna be 34. So I'm gonna type that in. Now to jump to the other, the length of this box, I'm gonna hit the tab key on my keyboard. That's gonna take me right over to that one. And the length of this one is 83. And now I'm gonna hit enter. 
and you will now see that I have the box displayed. I have the box displayed with my 83 and my 34. And then you will also see that there is some other symbols showing up around uh, my sketch here. They are called relationships. And you will actually see these relationships are all listed over here to my right in my menu. Now, relationships are rules for our 2D sketches. So think about that our sketches can all move around in uh, that plane they are placed on and the relations will kind of tie them down. So think of it as rules. Now, the way to work with this is that whenever you sketch something up with Infusion 360, first we apply relationships such as verticals, so if we're going to make something perpendicular, and then we're going to add dimensions afterwards. You will see me using relationships all through the video. And it's important to remember that the main goal for this is to turn our sketches from blue to black, what's gonna turn them from movable to having all tied down and locked down. So with this, I am ready to take this 2D sketch and extrude it into space. Now again, uh, these menus up here have all the commands that you want to use, but I think you're better off just out of the gate, start remembering some of these shortcut keys uh, so you don't have to learn these later on as you're using the software. To extrude into space, I am going to use the Q on your keyboard. So I'm going to click that one like that. And you will see that now I jumped out of kind of that sketch menu and I'm now in something called press pull. Now I'm going to select what I want to extrude into 3D space. And that's this rectangle here. And then I get a little arrow. And now I can actually start dragging my part into this 3D space. Now I'm going to make uh, this part here 38 tall. So I'm going to type in 38 in that little box there and hit enter. There we have it. We have now created our first true solid uh, on this part here. Now I said before that when we sketch within Fusion 360, we either sketch on a face or a plane. Now the first sketch we put in was on a plane. Now we can actually sketch uh, on faces because we have some. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna carve out uh, this the center portion uh, of this box. So I am going to right click on that face because I can now start a sketch on that and say, create a new sketch. You see it goes normal too. I'm gonna to zoom in by rolling the mouse wheel here. And I could go ahead and hit the S key and select another uh, center rectangle. And I could go ahead and find the origin again like we did before and sketch another rectangle like this. But on my drawing, it says it specified not the size of the rectangle, but the size of the wall. So I rather want to use that. And I really like to be lazy when it comes to CAD and CAM. So I'm going to use, I'm going to offset the outer edges, the four millimeters that is required for that wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my S key. And then I'm actually going to offset. So I can start typing in off set. And as soon as I hit the OF, you will actually see that the offset command shows up right here. So I'm just gonna click on that. And when I've done that, you will see that menu appears here. I'm just gonna click on the edge. And as I do that, I get a indication that I now can offset that edge. Okay, if I go on the outside here, it's a plus command. If I go on the inside, it is a minus command. So we're looking for minus four millimeters. I'm gonna hit enter. And now I have a four millimeter uh, wall created all the way around. You will see the sketch is black, so we can go ahead and we can, we can extrude that or cut that, and we're gonna again use the press pull. So the press pull is used both to extrude and subtract. So I'm gonna click on that. And now I'm just gonna select that bottom or that inside here. And you'll see if I pull up, it adds material. But if I pull down, then it would actually cut it away. Pretty smart.
Now, I'm not really sure what the depth is on this pocket. I know that it's four millimeters all the way around. And if I look at my drawing, that is, so I should actually say it, the, the box is 38 tall minus four. Well, that's a lot of math. Um, and I want to show you one of the real cool things about parametric modeling. Because I know that I want it to be four millimeters on the bottom uh, of the, the box, like the sides, I can actually go over here to the menu for this uh, extrude or cutting command, and you will see down here I have something called distance. So that is that distance. You will see that that distance here will change as I'm pulling this little arrow here. And I could do the math, but I will actually rather change this drop down to an object. And then if I scroll over and I click the bottom face, I actually have an offset. And I can actually go in here and I can create that minus four millimeter right here. So that means that the cut is going to go from the top to the bottom minus four. So that's actually kind of like doing the math for me. Let's hit OK to that. And now you will see that we have this here. Now let me just do a section view for you. So if I go over to inspect and say section analysis, if I click on this face here, you can actually see I can do a little section view. What this means is that it will always keep this to be four millimeters, even if we decided to make the box taller. So this is really one of the powers of parametric modeling. By using objects, select the bottom and offset by four, we are assuring that there will always be four millimeters on the bottom, just like we did the offset on the side. This means that if we ever have a design change where we're gonna make the box taller, we don't have to worry about uh, that four millimeter, that will always be on the bottom. If we had just done a, a, a subtraction from the top and down, if you make the box taller, then we'll get more material in the bottom. So this is one of the things that makes parametric modeling, you know, very powerful that we can set these rules. And the other thing you will see is that we are keeping on growing this little, uh, li this little history line down here. So here was our first sketch. Then we extruded that to the box. Then we created the sketch on top, and then we cut that down. And again, if I go in here to edit that uh, feature, I just right click and hit edit. We did it to an object and we selected that bottom face and created a four millimeter offset from the bottom, okay? So this is really powerful to know some of these function in here. Now at this point, I am actually going to add a couple of fillets to the part. And again, I'm gonna hit the S key. And you will now see the S key looks a little different because we are not inside of a sketch. So now we actually get some other tools. And the first one here is the fillet. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna start with the inner fillets of the box. So I'm just gonna hover over here and I can actually select right through geometry. It's smart enough to know that I'm probably aiming for these inside corners just by hovering over here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead here and just make these three millimeters. Hit OK. And you will see that now we have the fillet down in the corner. Now I'm going to create another fillet on the outside. So I'm just going to hit the S key again and go. And again, remember that you could hunt these down up in in the area down here. The fillet is also down here. You could also just hit F. Uh, that's another shortcut. But S, hit the fillet, and I'm going to select the outside here. Make sure I get the back side. I could, of course, just turn the part around. And I'm going to make the outside here. I'm going to make these six. All right, so just a quick recap. If you're modeling something up like an assembly, go ahead and make the components first before you start sketching. Always sketch on either a face or a plane. That's the rule. And make sure that you take the time to fully define those sketches. I know you're in a big rush. I know you want to get things done, but it's very, very good practice. So take a five minute break, go and get yourself a cup of coffee, then come back here and check out the second video where we're going to finish up this box. And I'm going to show you a couple of great tips 
So hurry back.